So today we're going to continue our talk about what the use of agent-based modeling is and what you can apply it to and what it's useful for. So let's talk about education and communication. So agent-based models essentially can help us communicate our results to others, right? They essentially encapsulate maybe a theory we have about a complex system and the way it might work, and then we can transfer that model by providing it to somebody else. Uh, they encapsulate that knowledge in a way that is very easily transferable. And what's nice about that is that that knowledge could be a brand new theory about the world or it could be a very old theory about the way the world works, right? Uh, so you could take, for instance, as in the case of NetLogo has done in the past, theories of electromagnetism, build models about electromagnetism, and then use them to teach uh, children about electromagnetism in new and different ways, right? Uh, and so uh, they encourage exploration around those theories, right, and around those pieces of knowledge because they allow uh, both children and modern and adult learners to kind of play around with those tools and kind of see what comes out of them. Agent-based modeling can also be used as a touchstone. And by a touchstone, what I mean is an object that many people who might be talking about a particular subject can use and actually physically interact with in order to understand the properties of uh, that theory, that system, right? Um, these are sometimes also called focal objects, right? Because they focus the thinking down on a particular area. Or Papert, Seymour Papert, uh, called them objects to think with, right? They're objects that you can use to uh, share your thoughts with other people. Essentially, they give us a common language which we can use to describe a complex phenomenon and then argue about its causes, its effects, and exactly how that phenomenon actually works, right? They're a much more concretized version of something like a natural language theory where someone just writes down what they think about the world, right? They turn these complex systems into a set of simple rules that we can then debate the merits of. And in fact, we can use these both in real world uh, examples or in thought examples, right? So we could postulate a series of things about the way the world might work or about the way a artificial world might work, right? And then we can create that within the agent-based model and allow us to think through what the ramifications of that theory might be, even if that theory could never really exist in the real world, right? Uh, and they give us the power to say what will happen if we assume those basic rules and then extrapolate up from that. Finally, uh, many people think that the goal of all modeling is prediction, but in fact, a lot of times modeling's, uh, the goal of a model is explanation or description of an event that you see, right? Um, ABM can obviously be used for prediction, and it's often used to think about possible future scenarios, but the validity of a prediction is determined by how well that model has been validated in the context of the thing that you are trying to predict. Right. So, for instance, something like Newton's law is a very valid model for prediction because people have explored it in almost every context that it's possible to explore it in. Right. Agent based models, especially a lot of the ones we create, we're often breaking the ways that it was validated when we actually start to make predictions and try and understand scenarios. Right. And so it is difficult to assess the validity of any model about an event that has not ever been seen within that modeling context before. Right. A lot of times what we actually mean by prediction is something like description and explanation. We want to describe and explain phenomenon that we've already seen, and then we want to see what the possible scenarios are that could come out of that model. And that actually brings me to one interesting thought I have about the future of agent-based modeling and complex systems in general. Uh, and to talk about that thought, let me first describe uh, a, a fictional science. Um, and this is psychohistory. And it was used by Isaac Asimov's character, Harry Seldon, in the Foundation series to essentially combine history, sociology, and mathematics to make approximate predictions about the future behavior of large groups of people. Here the idea is, is that if you know enough about the way history and sociology and other aspects of, of human social psychology work, right, you could understand from the current status of the world how the world is going to unfold in the near future, right? Um, and that's the, 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 the fictional science of psychohistory. 
But complex systems and agent-based modeling in, protection, in particular has the potential to help us understand how that could be built into the real world, how we could understand how large groups of individuals and organizations uh, will react to future events, potentially paving the way for a real psychohistory. Now, I want to make it clear, I don't think the goal of psychohistory or to the goal of any science that you're creating along these lines would be to make a specific point prediction. The goal would be to help us embrace the fact that the world is uncertain in the future and to understand the various scenarios we might see as a result of that uncertainty.